What is up, YouTube? Good to see you. And today we're going to focus on contouring the brachial plexus. This is an OAR that we commonly see when we're doing thoracic disease sites or head and neck. And I want to make this easy. Not only do I want to make it easy, but I want to make it fun, intuitive, and I want you to be able to share other people how to contour the brachial plexus so that you and your entire team can be doing contouring in less time with higher quality and ensuring safe treatments for your patients. And I will say that contouring the brachial plexus is strangely rewarding when you get it done right. So you may find yourself even looking forward to cases where you have to contour the brachial plexus. I know that sounds crazy, but let's get into it. So to begin, we have the brachial plexus, C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. And you have to decide, am I going to start at the top or am I going to start at the bottom? I'm going to share a method that begins with the bottom because it's a lot easier for me to find T1 as opposed to finding C5. So how do you find T1? Well, T1, remember, is below the T1 vertebral body. So it's in between the T1 and T2 vertebral bodies. How can you tell when you're down to T1? Well, it's where you have the first set of ribs coming off. So this is coming off the T1 vertebral body. And then here's the second set of ribs coming off T2. All you have to do is find the space in between. So this space, and that's going to be the where the money is. That's going to be where you're looking for the T1 nerve root. And here he is. So hopefully you can see this gray. And this is the probably the hardest part of the whole contouring of the brachial plexus is just getting this first step right. Because what you're going to find is somehow this guy has to make it over to the arm. And as we go down the next slice, we're going to start to see a fissure and the lung is here. So we have to jump over the lung and make it to the other side while we still have a chance. And this is going to seem very, it, it should not seem easy. It should seem very tight almost every single time. It's just like barely scraping over the lung. So I'm going to go down a slice now and I'm going to follow it here. I'm going to go down another slice. Follow it here. And as you can see, it's starting to get pretty horizontal now. And how do I know that, that this guy is the brachial plexus as opposed to this thing or this thing or this thing? Well, just remember vein artery nerve. You may have learned that in med school. But that's just saying from the outside to the end, you have the vein, artery, and then nerve. So the nerve is always going to be the thing that's closest to the inside. And so I've got my nerve here, and I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just going to kind of celebrate and keep taking him down. And hopefully you guys can see this. Now, the brachial plexus will look a little different depending on if the patient has their arms up or their arms down. This is a breast cancer patient with her arms up. So we're actually going to stop seeing the, the brachial plexus if we go down for far enough. Because going down, we're not going to have it anymore because her arm's up. So eventually the brachial plexus would actually keep going up if I were to follow it, like right here. See this? Brachial plexus. But when we're contouring as an OAR, usually we just go down to sort of its lowest point and we don't contour it as it continues up. Okay. So we have done the hardest part. <laughs> Good job. So the next step is working your way up. So part of what this is going to require is, is a little bit refining. As we remember that the brachial plexus is a continuous thing. So it's got to continue. And the next important thing is to remember that the brachial plexus goes between the anterior scalene and the middle scalene muscles. 
So if I'm scrolling up here, hopefully you can appreciate that there's this blob and then there's this blob. This is an anterior scalene. This is a middle scalene. And there's this little passageway, this little space in between. And that's where the brachial plexus sits. And so it'll actually keep following up until it gets to C5. So all we're going to do is kind of trace our way in this little passageway until we get up to C5. And I'm just doing one slice at a time, you know, no, no fancy tricks, not doing any interpolation, just one slice at a time, slow and steady. And then this is where you bust out your move and you see the next null for Raymond opening and you got to dive in, you got to get it. So here, I, I've just clicked here so I can check the sagittal and sure enough, I'm in the next vertebral body space. So this is going to be my next one up. But I'm, I can't just stay here and celebrate all day. I got to keep going. So I'm going to go up and then continue having this guy here. Go up. Continue having him there. In between the anterior and middle scalene. Up. And, um... You really have to concentrate on where worried you the previous slice because it's otherwise it's very easy to lose track. So I'm like literally just holding my mouse here as I go up each slice. And then here is my next chance to dive in. I'm gonna seize that opportunity. So now we've got three down, two to go. I'm gonna keep them here. And you'll notice that um as you get higher up, that distinction between the anterior and middle scalene becomes pretty fuzzy. It actually, it honestly becomes pretty iffy. But once it's higher up, you're actually just hugging the anterior portion of the remaining middle scalene muscle. So I'm just going to hang around in, in front of the middle scalene muscle. And then I'm just going to hang around right in front of it as we keep going up. And we'll wait till we get to the next clear opening. It's coming up soon. Okay, I think this might be it. Yeah. There you go. And now we just have one more. Almost there. Almost there. There we are. We've arrived. So, um, I should have five now, and I'm definitely looking at my sagittal view right here. And I can see one, two, three, four, five. And then this is a really fun part where you can scroll up and down and you can see it so beautifully nabbing into each one of those each one of those whoop 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 and this is why contouring the brachial plexus is so rewarding because you just get to make the whoop sound every time you finished so yeah that's that's the brachial plexus Here's a summary of the steps for your reference. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Feel free to like or subscribe to show your support, and good luck with your next brachial plexus!